Hello, Crossover family. There have been some words from the Bible that have been instrumental in my spiritual maturation over these years. They weren't always easy to contend with, but they have been instrumental. And they are the words of the Apostle James, which is to be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. And the reason that James gives us these words because there are things that happen within the context of our human experience that cause us to have a tendency to emotionally respond first rather than spiritually respond. And if you know what I know, there are times in which we've responded emotionally and instead of helping the situation, we hurt the situation. Instead of thinking, making things better, we make things worse. So he says, be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. So you can be clear, so you can have a, a clear understanding and be able to respond in a way that is centered around the kingdom of God. There are many movies that I just can't watch. And these movies occur around a time in our American history the period of time of slavery. And when you look at these movies, you see the inhumane brutality and violence directed toward these African-American slaves. And I find myself vexed in these movies. It's just difficult, it's hard. It's And one of the big challenges is to see that I am challenged in my will regarding having a bibliocentric response as opposed to a secular cultural response. The bibliocentric response, you ready for this, is to forgive. The culturally sensitive response is to retaliate and have them feel what I feel, have the oppressor feel oppression. And so it becomes difficult at times when we find ourselves facing these kind of elements. And it's in this period of time, we have encountered another occurrence in our country that has unveiled a pre-existing historical problem. And in this moment of time, many of us have been challenged emotionally. Many of us have been vexed. I'm talking about the occurrence that happened in Minnesota. And we know that this is not the first time or these events have happened. But here again, it's platformed, it's conveyed to the nation and to the world, and we get to see it in real time. And it's this event that has, I, I know it has for you, for me, has brought a great degree of sadness. I'm saddened for the loss of life of Mr. Floyd. I'm saddened that his family has to grieve through this and become a statistic, another statistic in the, in the practice of this kind of mentality. I'm saddened that, that in the face of meaningful, proactive protests that has the ability to send a positive message and a forceful message that has been sabotaged by riotous activities, violence, and the destruction of our own communities. I'm saddened by a political response that is driven by partisanship rather than a pursuit for healing and reconciliation. I'm saddened that there will be a host of good and decent police officers who will be tainted by the actions of these individuals. And so what happens in the midst of all this is the fundamental question, what do we do? What should our response be? How can we fix this? And, and there will be discussions and there will be town halls and, and there will be interviews with people of, uh, of significant insight and knowledge. 
and some things may change. There may be the institution of certain laws or levels of accountability, but sometimes it appears that we slip right back into the place of the normalcy of everyday life and hoping that these things don't occur again. And the reason is such a challenge is because laws don't change people. Law didn't change you and law didn't change me. We know it, the law of God didn't change you and the law of God didn't change me. It was grace that changed us. The grace of Almighty God. And that brings us to this point. What's our role? Well, you gotta ask, what is our role as Christians? Our role as Christians is to be ambassadors of grace. Because if we're going to really talk about change, and we can talk about conformity, we can talk about restraints, we can talk about limitations, but if we're talking about change, that's where the church comes in. That's where you come in. That's where I come in. We are ambassadors, ministers of grace. We can begin to help people by our witness, praying with them, the prayer of salvation, bringing them into a kingdom relationship with God. And in so doing, we're changing them from the inside out. Not trying to repress their ill will and wrong feelings from the outside in, but changing them genuinely from the inside out. And in so doing, guess what folks? We would be changing the world. So in this moment, amidst much sadness, I want us to pray together. And there is a bright note in all of this. If you look at these protests that are happening around our country, even in our own city, you do see there is a cultural mix of protesters, white, black, Hispanic, coming together to declare their disdain for what has happened. And so we appreciate the fact that this thing is not just touching one community, but touching us all. That's a growth. That's a tremendous statement. But let's, it can even be better. And we can become the examples that God has called us to be in reconciling and healing and strengthening our race relationships. Can, can we take a moment and pray? Father, I pray right now. I pray that you would help us individually to all understand our role in changing the world. That we are changing the world when we equip our children not to be embittered and, and not to be driven with hostility and unforgiveness. We are changing the world when we respond with grace rather than anger and hostility. That we are changing the world when we are sharing the gospel and ministering to those who are black and white and Hispanic and Asian. We, we are changing the world, dear God, when we love people that we may have never loved before and serve people that we would have never serve and touch people that we would have never touched before. So help us in this, dear God. And then I pray, Father, I pray for our president. Father, I pray because you call us to pray, not to pray against him, but to pray for him. I pray, dear God, that you would begin to do a surgical work in his heart. That, Father, that he will not be politically driven, but that there would be a point in which his heart would be adjusted to see, Father, the, the capacity he has to have influence, even if it upsets his own political base, to begin to be a point of healing and a point of support that brings this country together. So, Father, I pray for our president. Help him, guide him, teach him, show him, convict him. And, Father, I pray, dear God, for Crossover Church. Help us to model what we want to see. Help us to be reaching out and touching people of all races, all cultures, dear God. Help us, dear God. It is not our pursuit to be homogeneous. It is our suit, our pursuit to be kingdom driven. So we thank you. Comfort our hearts in the face of all this sadness and use us in this day right where we are. In Jesus' name.